adding and subtracting whole numbers with your host, me, Catherine. So let's get started. First thing you're probably asking is, what is a whole number? A whole number comprises the set of counting numbers, counting numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, with 0. Here's the set of whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. It's important to remember that whole numbers do not have decimals, fractions, or negative numbers. Before we get too far, I know you're probably asking, what is a set? Well, a set is a collection of objects, and we usually put those between braces. So we would say this is the set of whole numbers. Do you happen to know what those three dots are called? If you're a new James Bond fan, you'll know it's ellipsis. It's one of the key words from one of the movies. So let's look at this set of numbers, and we're going to figure out which one are whole numbers. Our first number is 21. Yep, 21 is a whole number. What about negative 13? Nope, because negative numbers are not whole numbers. What about 1 half? Once again, 1 half is a fraction and fractions are not whole numbers. How about 8? It sure is. How about 19? That one too. What about 0 0.84? No, because decimals are not whole numbers either. Now that we have a good idea of what a whole number is, we're going to start adding them. Let's look at a couple examples. Let's add these together. Well, what we do is we add from the top down, or from the top to the bottom, and we always work right to left. The first numbers we are going to add are 3 plus 3, and that's 6. Then we go to the left one. 4 plus 1 is 5. And we have one more over, 2 plus 1 is 3. Cool. Let's add these two. Remember, we start from the right. 3 plus 5 is 8. And we work our way left. 7 plus 1 is also 8. And then finally, we just have a 1. If a column adds to more than 9, that means 10, 11, or 12, so on, we need to carry the first digit to the next column. Some books call this regrouping. I will be calling it carrying. They mean the same thing. So let's look at our first one. Once again, we start from the right. 6 plus 4 is 10. Well, 10 is bigger than 9. So I'm going to carry the 1 and put down my 0. That's 10. I'm going to go to the next column. Remember, we move left. But this time, I have to include the 1 on the top. 1 plus 8 is 9, plus 3 is 12. Cool. Notice I carried my 1 again. Once again, we're going to add the 1 from the top. So 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4. Awesome. Let's try this one. Remember, we always start from the right. 4 plus 8 is 12. Notice I carried the 1. 1 plus 8 is 9. Plus 9 is 18. Notice I carried the 1 again. And then 1 plus 7 is 8. Let's look at one more before you get to try a couple. Remember, we start from the right. 6 plus 8 is 14. Then I take 1 plus 3 plus 7, and that's 11. And then finally, 1 plus 9 plus 1 is 11. And then I bring down the extra 1. Here's some for you to try. You're going to pause the lesson, you're going to add, and then press play to check. Let's see how you did. We're going to take 127 plus 231. 7 plus 1 is 8. 2 plus 3 is 5. And 1 plus 2 is 3. Great! Let's go to the next one. 345 plus 729. 5 plus 9 is 14. And you noticed I carried the 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. Plus 2 is 7. And then finally, 3 plus 7 is 10. Let's look at our last one. 3 plus 1 is 4. 6 plus 2 is 8. 7 plus 4 is 11. Notice I carried the 1. And then 1 plus 1 is 2. Awesome! Let's look at this application problem. 
The fastest route from the White House gate to the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. is six minutes. What is the total distance in feet? So let's look here. Here's the White House. Yay, hello, Mr. President. And then we have to go through Lafayette Square. We have to walk. But then we're going to drive. So we're going to go here and here and then here and here and here. And here is the Lincoln Memorial. Notice there's a couple other routes we can take, but this one happens to be the shortest. It's only six minutes. So how are we going to find the total distance? We're going to add all of these together. We're going to add the distance in feet that we have to travel to get from the White House to the Lincoln Memorial. So we're going to take 59 plus 1,056 plus 1,584 plus 3,168 and finally 1,056. So let's add them. Once again, we start from the right and we add straight down. 9 plus 6 plus 4 plus 8 plus 6, wow, that turns out to be 33. Then we're going to add straight down again, but we have to include the 3 that we carried. 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 8 plus 6 plus 5 happens to be 32. Let's go to the next column. 3 plus 5 plus 1 is 9, and finally 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1 is 6. Now we need to answer the question, what is the total distance in feet? The total distance using the fastest route from the White House gate to the Lincoln Memorial is 6,923 feet. This is really scary. There is a zombie apocalypse. Your family comes to stay with you because you're a slow runner. What? Anyway, the plan is to create a perimeter with barbed wire really high to keep them out. How much will you need? Well, your first question is probably, well, hopefully not what is a zombie, but what is the perimeter? Well, perimeter is the outside, or for us, it's going to be the gate of a geometric figure. We need to add to find the perimeter of our house. Recently, you had a surveyor figure out the dimensions of your yard and your house. It turns out that it's 68 feet by 72 feet by 68 feet by 72 feet. Now we have to find the perimeter. We need to find out how many feet of barbed wire we need to keep them out. What are we going to do? We're going to add. So the perimeter is going to be 68 feet plus 72 feet plus 68 feet plus 72 feet. And what do we get? Yep, 280 feet. But then there's the question, who's going to go to the hardware store to get the barbed wire? Probably not you because you're the slow runner. Here's another application problem. This also includes perimeter. We want to find the perimeter of the room and yards, but this one you're going to try. I'm going to give you a little hint though. We're missing a couple sides. Pause the video, find the perimeter, and then play to check. Okay, let's see how you did. But we need to find A and B. One thing I know is that if I pull this straight across, this is still three yards. Let me do it one more time in case you missed that. I'm pulling this straight across, and this is three yards. A is right here. Well, now I have to do some addition here. We know that three yards plus A yards is going to be eight yards. Well, three plus five is eight. A yards needs to be five. Cool. Let's look at B. Well, if I pull across my five yards, there's my five yards, and I pull across my six yards, B has to be five plus six. So B yards is 11 yards. Now we're ready to figure out the complete perimeter. Remember, we're going to add all the sides to find the perimeter. So we're going to take one side, which is eight, plus the next side, which is five, plus the next side, which is also five, plus the next side, which is six, plus the next side, which is three, plus the next side, which is 11. When we take 8 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 3 plus 11, what do we get? 38 yards. That means the perimeter of this figure is 38 yards. Here's our quiz for adding whole numbers. You're going to pause the quiz and solve. No peeking. 
then press play to check. Let's see how you did. So number one, hopefully you have 837. Number two is 1,259. And finally, number three is 1,066. If you got them correct, you can move along in the video. For the rest of us, we're going to add these together. 452 plus 385. Once again, we start from the right. 2 plus 5 is 7. 5 plus 8 is 13. And finally, 1 plus 4 plus 3 is 8. Great! Let's look at number 2. 1,893 plus 266. We're going to start from the right. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 plus 6 is 15. 1 plus 8 plus 2 is 11. And finally, 1 plus 1 is 2. Let's look at number 3, the last one. 197 plus 869. 7 plus 9 is 16. 1 plus 9 plus 6 is also 16. 1 plus 1 plus 8 turns out to be 10. Let's subtract whole numbers. Subtracting whole numbers is exactly the same as adding whole numbers, except we subtract. Yeah. We're going to start from the right. 3 minus 3 is 0. 4 minus 1 is 3 and 2 minus 1 is 1. Let's look at the next one. 6 minus 5 is 1, 5 minus 3 is 2, and 1 minus nothing is 1. Now sometimes we're not going to be able to subtract. What we have to do then is borrow from the neighbor to the left. Hopefully the neighbor on the left doesn't mind us borrowing. Borrowing may be a new word for you. Maybe you use the word trade. Sometimes you need to subtract a smaller number from a larger number. The top digit is smaller than the bottom. In that case, you need to borrow from the next column to the left. Let's look at an example. We always start from the right. So I have 2 minus 4. Unfortunately, I can't take 2 minus 4. So I need to borrow from my neighbor. I'm going to borrow 1 from my neighbor. So that leaves a 4. What do I do with the 1? I put it with the 2. So now we have 12 minus 4. 12 minus 4 is 8. Great. And then we continue. 4 minus 3 is 1. And then 5 minus 1 is 4. Not bad. Let's look at another one. Once again, I can't take 3 minus 4. So I need to borrow from my neighbor. Since the number is 2 and I'm borrowing 1, I'm left with 1. And the 1 goes over to the 3 and makes a 13. 13 minus 4 is 9. But then we have another problem because I can't take 1 minus 6. So I need to borrow from the other neighbor. So the 3 will become a 2. The 1 becomes an 11. 11 minus 6 is 5. And then 2 minus 1 is 1. Let's look at our last example. Once again, I can't take 1 minus 8. So I need to borrow from my neighbor. So the 4 becomes a 3. Now I'm only borrowing 1. That means that I'm going to have 11 minus 8. 11 minus 8 is 3. Now I look here, but 3 minus 7, I can't do that either. Oh my gosh. So I have to borrow from the 6. So the 6 becomes a 5, and the 3 becomes a 13. 13 minus 7 is 6. Finally, I'm going to take 5 minus 3, which is 2. Here are a couple for you to try. You're going to pause the lesson, subtract, and then press play to check. Let's see how you did. Well, in the first one, I can't take 2 minus 4, so I have to borrow from the 3. So 3 becomes a 2, and the 2 becomes a 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. Now I have 2 minus 5, but once again, I cannot take 2 minus 5. So I need to borrow from the 6. So the 6 becomes a 5, and the 2 becomes a 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. And finally, 5 minus 1 is 4. Let's look at the middle one. 8 minus 5 is 3, no problem. But I can't take 2 minus 7. I'm going to borrow from this 2, make it a 1. So now I have 12 minus 7. 12 minus 7 is 5. Then 1 minus 1 is 0, and we just have 53. Let's look at our last one. This one's kind of crazy, so let's look at this one. 
I need to take 0 minus 5, but I can't, so I need to borrow from my neighbor. But the problem is my neighbor doesn't have anything either, so I have to borrow from my neighbor's neighbor. What's going to happen? The 4 becomes a 3, and then we have a 10. But remember, we have to borrow one more time. The 10 becomes a 9, and then the 0 becomes a 10. Wow! Cool. 10 minus 5 is 5, 9 minus 8 is 1, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Awesome! Let's look at this application problem. A hectopascal, HPA, is named after the French mathematician Blaise Pascal, and it is a metric measurement unit of pressure. We're going to answer the questions below using the table. So our table has the 2016 tropical storms and their intensities. How much higher is the hectopascal from tropical store Kampasu than Konsan? This one we're going to have to subtract. I want to know how much higher. So let's do that. 4 minus 5, well, oh no, I can't do that. I need to borrow from the 9. So the 9 becomes an 8, and the 4 becomes a 14. 14 minus 5 is 9, 8 minus 8 is 0, and 9 minus 9 is 0. So it turns out that Kampasu is 9 hectopascals higher than Kunson. How much lower is the hectopascal from Tropical Storm Kansun from Rai? This one we have to subtract again. So we'll need to take 996 minus 985. Cool! 6 minus 5 is 1, 9 minus 8 is 1, and 9 minus 9 is 0. What does that mean? Tropical Storm Kansun is 11 hectopascals lower than Rai. Here's the self-quiz. What you're going to do is you're going to pause the quiz, no peeking, then press play to check. Let's see how you did. Number one, did you get B, 551? How about number two, 2,875? That's C. And finally, three is A again, 83. If you did good, just move along in the video. Otherwise, let's do these together. 876 minus 325. 6 minus 5 is 1. 7 minus 2 is 5. And 8 minus 3 is also 5. All right. 3,000 minus 125. This one we had to borrow, borrow, borrow. Well, what am I saying? 0 minus 5, I can't do that. So I have to borrow from this neighbor. But unfortunately, this neighbor is broke. So we go to the next neighbor. That neighbor is also broke, so we have to go to the farthest neighbor, which is 3. We're going to borrow 1 from the 3, and we're going to make it a 2. So now we have 10. But remember, we need to borrow from that neighbor to the next neighbor. So that's how we get a 9 and a 10. But we have to do it one more time. So now we have 10 minus 5, which is 5. 9 minus 2 is 7. 9 minus 1 is 8. And finally, we have 2. Let's look at the last one. 572 minus 489. Once again, I can't take 2 minus 9. So I'm going to borrow from our neighbor. So the 7 becomes a 6. And now we have a 12. 12 minus 9 is 3. Cool. But I can't take 6 minus 8. Oh my gosh. So I need to borrow from the 5. The 5 becomes a 4. And the 6 becomes a 16. 16 minus 8 is 8. And 4 minus 4 is 0. So that's how our answer is 83. Thanks for watching. PyCrustable has awesome video guides and worksheets available for purchase. Just go over to Teachers Pay Teachers. Be sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss the new videos. Do you have a request? Let me know at PyCrustable at gmail.com or in this YouTube comment box below. Thanks for hanging out. Hope to see you again in the next lecture.